I would like to talk about Pokemon cards. So, I got back into collecting Pokemon cards. I don't want to say hardcore, but I have spent hundreds of dollars on them. Um, in 2021? 20, e No. E 2022. 2022. It was 2022 because it all stemmed from MAGFest 2022 when I when we were opening boxes of cards. Um, yeah, yeah, that was the one. That was the one because that was that was the point at which I bought my first like booster box of um, of Pokemon cards. Um, so yeah, it was that, and then I started collecting and getting. Um, I would usually buy like an ETB. I have an ETB from pretty much every set um, and a booster box if available, obviously. Um, sometimes I would buy two booster boxes from the same set. I think the only times I actually did that, though, were Astral Radiance and uh, Paldea Evolved. I think those were like the only times that I've actually done it. Um, I guess maybe because there's not as much to do in the middle of the year at, at that point, but I don't know. Um, and I have very much enjoyed collecting Pokemon cards. I have a pretty decent collection, um, but I've hit something of a crossroads um, in my Pokemon card collecting uh, journey. Um, and it's just that I have a lot of them. <laughs> um, and I'm starting to have thoughts about Pokemon card collecting because here's the thing right so I don't have a complete set of any um you know of any here's the issue that I have with my words right now I say complete set but they're called expansions I guess or whatever um but I, I just I don't have any anything complete 100% um not even close not even not even not even close really um but I still like collecting them. Here's the reason. Here's the reason I collect Pokemon cards, right? Um, I, I think what really got me into doing it was the fact that these are small rewards that I can give myself to stave off the idea that, um, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I, I have nothing to show for my, for the work that I do, right? Like, you know, I, yes, I, I, you know, I don't have my own place. Um, I'm not really paying a mortgage or anything like that. So it's not like I look around me and I'm like, oh yeah, this is why, you know, um, like Pokemon cards are, I've used as this like little reward for myself. They're, they're, they are these, um, fairly small items that I can buy that give me a moment's excitement that remind me, oh yes, I do make money. Um, and I think even if I, you know, uh, you know, did live in a place. Pokemon cards would still be a pretty accessible, fun expenditure um, that I could that I could make, right? Because they're not, they're just, you know, you can buy them in very small $5 increments or you can buy them in large $100 increments or more, um, you know, uh, which I, I usually don't go beyond the, uh, the $100 increments. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just... Um, you know, that's kind of what, that's kind of how I use them, you know, especially when I worked back at the branch, I was like, you know, there was a GameStop like right across the street. So, um, if I had like a rough day or it was like, I was in charge, I played the role of manager that day and I was stressed and I was like, I made it through this week. What I would do is I would swing around, um, go into that there GameStop and, uh, buy myself a couple packs of Pokemon cards. And then it was like, okay, this is a good way to start the weekend. You know what I mean? It was just like, it was nice. You know, I, the, wow, does this sound an awful lot like an addiction to cigarettes? Kind of. Um, it's basically an addiction to gambling. You know, the little, the little dopamine rush you get is from opening up a pack of Pokemon cards with the hopes that inside there is something good. Um, and uh, it's very exciting when it does happen. Um, the excitement lasts about a couple minutes afterwards. And then like a couple seconds uh, when you remember that you had good luck the last time. And then by the next time you buy Pokemon cards, you're not excited anymore. Um, that's pretty much how it works. Um, but uh, I also, um, you know, that's kind of how, that's just, this is how it worked. It was just a nice thing to do for myself. It was just a little reward, right? 
Um, and it was cool to have like, uh, you know, in the end, when I started putting my binders together, I was like, okay, here's the cool page with all the good stuff on it. Right. Um, and it's like, it was exciting to put that together and put those things next to each other and be like, here's all the cool things I got. Look at them. Um, you know, I did that with like pictures when I would open a booster box, I would take a picture of all my rares. Um, and that was, that was fun. I kind of stopped doing that. People stopped, people didn't really react to them. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't be bragging like this, but, um, yeah. Uh, so I did that and, and it's been fun, you know, and, um, I've been excited for every, for pretty much every new expansion, you know, one after another. So I would get the, um, you know, pretty much any time a new expansion was announced, I'd, I'd pre-order an ETB, um, and, and be ready for that and get it and look through the little, um, do I not have one within arm's reach? That's surprising. Oh no, here's one right here. And look through the little book and be like, okay, well, you know, Obsidian Flames is a terrible example because this set is not good. Um, you know, I'd be like, oh, look at these. It's like, I want this, this, this one, and this one, right? Um, I don't know what I just pointed to there. So you can, you can zoom in and figure that out if you want. Um, if you're really good, uh, you know, and, and that's pretty much how I do it. I was like, okay, cool. This set has some good stuff in it. I think I'll buy more. Most of the time I bought like, you know, an ETB, a booster box and some random booster packs with pretty much every set. I kind of stopped doing that a little bit more lately. Um, it definitely slowed down when I went to my new job because although there is a GameStop on the way home from work, it's like not right there. And for some reason, that immediate gratification is not as um, it's, it's like it's not as worth it to me for some reason because I have to like drive a couple miles down a road before I get to the GameStop and the GameStop is like right before the highway. And I'm like half the time when I get to that the light before it, I'm like you know, I really just want to get on the highway and go home. That's pretty much, that's usually where I'm at at that point. Um, and I just, uh, it's just hard to, you know, it's just harder to get to. And I, I just, I don't know, I'm that lazy, I guess. And I don't want to reward myself. And I, I think part of the other reason is that like, you know, I just don't get as stressed at this new job. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I never feel like, oh man, I really need to like reward myself for the job I'm doing. In fact, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a whole other story, but like, I never feel like I'd, I know that I feel like I deserve rewards for doing a good job at this one because I feel like I don't really do like a spectacular job, which is maybe not my judgment call to make. But, you know, that's how I feel about it. I, like I know what effort I put in and it's not. But um, beside the point, um, I, I just like I don't know. Lately, in the past couple of months, I, I've kind of basically since Obsidian Flames, I think. I'm kind of starting to fall out of love with Pokemon cards. I don't know if love is a bit of a strong word, but I'm like, I'm starting to lose the feeling from it. Um, Obsidian Flames was just like not a good set. There was just not a whole lot to chase in it. Obsidian Flames was purely marketed on Charizard. Dark Charizard. And I was like, that's really boring. <laughs> I was like, that's really fucking boring. And like... There was also, uh, around the time Obsidian Flames came out, 151 came out, and they announced Paradox Rift. Like, there was a lot coming down the pipeline, and I think that part of that was just overwhelming, and I think part of it was also underwhelming, because, like, 151 was a really cool... Are people going to get mad that I say 151 and not, like, 100... And not, like, what, what would you say, 151? No, 151 is the quickest way to say that. Um, but, um, you know... Um, 151 was supposed to be this cool set, but it really isn't <laughs> like, yeah, I look at it and it's like, they picked some really random Pokemon to be like the featured Pokemon. It's like, all right, we're going to do like Zapdos and Alakazam. Uh, there's Jinx EX for some reason. It's like, you know, it's like kind of a weird thing. Like, I understand that maybe they don't feel the need to give Gyarados a really good card again, especially since he just got a good one in Scarlet and Violet, but like, like, why would you not do the most iconic and popular Pokemon from that era? And, like, they completely, like, glossed over the trainers. They didn't make it, like, about Kanto itself. They just kind of made it about, you know, the Pokemon. And that's not a bad thing. Did I just get a text? No, it's Pokemon Go. Speaking of Pokemon. Um, <laughs> but, um, no. Like, I don't know. 151 was pretty disappointing to me, too. Because there just wasn't a whole lot interesting in it. 
and there was not a good way to buy it without getting a bunch of junk, which is a problem. Um, like, that's one of my issues with the special sets. I love Crown Zenith. Crown Zenith is like my favorite expansion ever because it was just so cool. It felt like you got good things and everything. The issue is, is that, man, I bought a lot of cardboard and plastic. And I also bought a lot of stupid sleeves. And I bought, um, like, I would never, ever buy the um, the Morpico set again because it came with... It came with this fucking thing that's like, I mean, it's cool. It's cute. I actually love Marnie, but like, I don't need like three or four of these laying around. Right. And like the only thing that one five one came with was a whole ass binder, a whole ass poster or like, you know, I mean, I guess the Alakazam set and the Zapdos set weren't that bad, but like, I don't need a whole bunch of other shit. You know what I mean? And I don't want to have to only buy four packs at a time. With a, with, a, with a big cardboard box or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, god damn, we're polluting the earth. I think they have kind of reduced the amount of plastic that they've been using in their products lately, which is just, like, good. But it's like, I've never felt more guilty about a product <laughs> than, like, wow, these things hold other plastic things. It's like, oh, that's, that's really gross. Um, but, yeah, I, I think they just kind of burned me out on Pokemon cards a little bit. And, like... I, I it, it also didn't help that with Scarlet and Violet, I didn't like the EX cards. I thought the the V, the Pokemon V, avoiding calling it the V cards, um, I thought the Pokemon V were, like, just kind of cooler. I thought that the full art was the way to go, and I thought that that was clear because they did it in Sun and Moon with the GX cards, and they looked great, and the, and the, and the Pokemon V looked really good, too. And to go back to Pokemon EX, where it's, like... The art is just not as exciting and fucking half of it is covered up by a text box. Like it's still there. You can still see it. The text box is kind of transparent, but like you really don't like if you're looking at it from afar, you just see the the like awkward 3D Pokemon graphic as the art of the card because they don't it's less common for them to do actual art for these cards. Like it just I don't know. They just don't look as good, and I got less excited about them. I still love the art cards, um, but they're always hit or miss. I think the other issue is that, like, you know, the, the other big issue that I have with, with Pokemon cards is, like, no matter how many bu you buy, no matter how many you collect, it's like you are never really close to legitimately... There's no way to legitimately collect an entire set. There's no way to even really come close unless you spend, like, thousands of dollars on each expansion. And I don't like that. More and more, it's like as I put my collections in binders, it's really frustrating to me how many holes there are in it. Like even with just like the Pokemon, the basic Pokemon EX and V, right? Like there's, it's just like there is a frustrating amount of holes in my collection. And then of course you get to the gallery and then there's like a fuck ton of holes in my collection because those things are rare, you know? You don't always get them and when you do, it's like there's just so many more to get. When you get a a double of an ultra rare or an illustration rare, it is like the worst feeling in the world. It's like, oh my god, I just did all of this for nothing. And that's happened to me quite a bit. In the most recent set of Paradox Rift, it's like, I don't know that I have very many good cards from it. And like... Iron Hands Ultra Rare was one that I knew that I've gotten twice. And it's like, I come on, man. <laughs> like, it sucks because there's so many other like you look in the books at the checklist and you're like, there's so many other cards I could get or could have gotten. And I just never do. And it's just like it's kind of a sinking feeling, you know, and it's like, you know, could I go on TCG player and like order all the cards I need? Could I have done that to get the Bramblin I wanted from how they evolved? Yeah, I could. And that would be the sensible thing to do. And that would be the far cheaper thing to do because the Bramblin I want is a cheap card. Like, no one fucking wants that card, right? So I could probably buy it for like two bucks, if that, you know? Um, and But at the same time, that just feels like cheating. It just feels like it's not the way in, it's intended to do, you know? It's like, yeah, I could, you know... It's like, it's like watching a YouTube video of a game that you're supposed to be playing, right? Like, I could play the game that I have purchased, right? Um, or I could just watch a YouTube video of it, even though I purchased the game. You know what I mean? But it's like, Pokemon cards are one of those things where it's like, you buy the product and you technically get what you pay for, but you also don't get what you pay for. Like, when I buy, when I buy an Amiibo, so there's the Mio Amiibo. 
Isn't that cute? It, she's fucking cute. This is a video about Pokemon cards. Um, but like when I buy this, it's like I get this. And whether it's satisfying or not, I get it. I have it. It's going to sit around for the rest of my for the rest of its uh, known life and probably for the rest of my known life, too. Um, so whoever has to deal with my estate is going to be like, wow, what do we do with all these fucking Amiibo? Um, but like, what are we going to do with all these fucking Pokemon cards? Honestly, um, that was a real that was, that was I fired that sentence off. Holy crap. Um but yeah, you know, it's like Pokemon cards, though, it's like you buy them and it's like, yes, I technically got what I paid for, but sometimes the product is better than others. And that's a really weird feeling as a consumer, too, where it's like, you know, I can spend $35 on a couple packs and they can be total shit. Or I can spend $35 on a, on a couple packs and get some really good sh shit that I really wanted, right? Like, it's really one of the only products that is variable like that. You really just pay for the, for the thing, you know, for the... For the chance, you know, and it's like, man, you know, for the price of these things, it's like, am I really getting what I need out of this to keep going? And it's like a lot of the time, no, it's not like it's consistent because, again, you could buy 20 packs and there could be nothing good in it. You know, you could just completely blow it. And there's like really not a whole lot of other products like that. Other products, you buy them and there you go. Like, <laughs> you know, it's it's especially fun in the beginning, like when, a, when an expansion comes out. And like, you know, you don't have any of the cards in it. So so everything you get is at least somewhat exciting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just so it's, you know, but as you go on, it's like, wow, I'm just getting a bunch of stupid cards. All I care about is the rares. And even then I have most of the rares because I've bought a booster box. And when you buy a booster box, you get most of the rares in the set. Um, so really all I need is the EXs and the illustration rares and you just don't get those every time So if you don't get those a Pokemon pack might as well just go in the goddamn trash um, But it still feels like the right way to do it because you pay like the logic is you pay for the product to get what you want And with Pokemon cards, it's like nah, nah, you don't nah, that's not how it works. You don't get that, you know But like at the same time, it's like that search that chase Right. I actually have the Neo Tui song Chase in my head right now. Um, but like, you know, when you chase after a card and you open the packs and you get it and you get a good card, it's like it is a good feeling. It feels like you did it right. It feels like when you pull a card, you did it right. Your faith was paid off. Your prayers were answers. God is real. All is good. <laughs> like, um, so I don't know. It just feels it feels cheap to go on and buy it. There's not that same sense of satisfaction. Like, oh yeah, I went on and I went on and I just bought it, and I own it now. But like, there's not a story behind it. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's just like, okay, now I just get to put it in a sleeve and that's it. But like, if you pull it, it's like, this is me. This is my luck. This is a, this this Pokemon binder is a demonstration of my good or bad karma. Like, it's like, you know, <laughs> this is a measure of me as a person. If I am good, I will have many of the rares. It's like, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing, but like. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I look at the sets and I'm like, you know, especially when I look at sets I like, like Paldea Evolved or Paradox Rift or Crown Zenith. It's like looking back at those uh, players guides and the checklists and, and look at all the cards, like especially with Crown Zenith now, because like, you know, those products are phasing out, you know, they're harder to, they're a little, they're starting to be harder to get now. Um, and, um, you know, I own several, so I don't need to buy a ton more of them because, again, it's a lot of plastic and a lot of other bullshit that's in there. Um, you know, the, you know, I look back at it and I'm like, wow, I spent a lot of money on Crown Zenith and I did. And it was way easier to because, like, you couldn't buy booster boxes and just get what you wanted. You had to buy all these other products. You know, I spent a lot of money on Crown Zenith and I didn't get... Zoroark, I didn't get Regigigas, I didn't get either of the Zara Aura cards, I didn't get Mewtwo, I didn't get that Keldeo card. Um, I looked through and there's like these so many cards that I didn't end up getting. Meanwhile, I got four by barrels, I got two uh, Hoopa V's, you know, I think I got two Suicune V's too, and it's like, why couldn't I just get? like not doubles of those and like had m we ended up with more of the set you know what i mean and it just like it makes me sad to look back at crown zenith now and be like 
yeah i got some good ones but i also just like there's still so many good cards that i would just love to own and probably never will and like it's just gonna stay that way now you know i've I, some of the binders that i put together it's like i understand that they're just gonna remain incomplete i'm I, like i'm gonna remain without the cards that i want from those sets and that feels bad you know what i mean it feels kind of bad it makes me look back and i'm like you know for the first time looking through them i'm like maybe i shouldn't have spent all that money on pokemon cards and i hate saying that because like you know i constantly justified buying them and like i don't know it's it is still fun to open packs and i love opening packs and i love you know there's there's something nice about like coming home from work and opening a pack or two from a booster box right there's just something nice about that like nice little wind down like i'm talking about smoking a cigarette right like <laughs> um like there's something nice about it and to get a cool one is cool but they just feel worth less and less you know what i mean and it's like i look at my collection and i'm like it's not even really a very good collection <laughs> you know what i mean like because i just kind of bought things and then that was it so i don't know i kind of feel like this year i might slow down on pokemon cards paldean fates was the first set that came out and i did not have any items on pre-order for it and i did not buy any items first day and I'm still considering not really buying any items because there's just nothing in that set that makes me feel excited. You know what I mean? Like, the shinies are cool. I would love to pull some shinies. That would be nice. But it's like, I look at what's in the set and I'm like, there's really not anything that exciting here. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. And Temporal Forces is coming out. And I just, I don't know, like, what could possibly be in that set that would excite me? And I don't have an answer to that. Um, and maybe we'll see. Maybe I'll look at it and we'll we'll find something that I like, and I'll be like, okay, cool. I'd like to I'd like to pull for that. But the amount of times I have looked at a set and been like, all right, I want this 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 in this card, and the amount of times that I haven't gotten that, those instances are piling up, and I think that's what's burning me out. On Pokemon cards now it's really a shame because I it seems like I have a couple of friends getting into Pokemon cards this year um so it's kind of like oh man you know I'm picking a really good time to get out of the game aren't I like of course I feel like the same thing happened with Splatoon I feel like that one episode of Ed and Eddie where they're trying to follow the fads you know and it's like except it's the opposite because I get out of it before all my friends get into it and it's like I don't have any friends to talk about it with while I'm doing it and then like afterwards like oh everybody's talking about it now and I'm like oh, Jesus Christ um so I don't know I just wanted to make a vlog about Pokemon cards and my feelings if you've collected something and burnt out on it let me know below I don't know I just wonder like what am I gonna reward myself with now you know, because, like, again, Pokemon cards, like, it's taken a long time for them to take up space. They do now. They take up a lot of space. Um, but, like, I don't know. That's the that's the main thing that keeps me holding on to Pokemon cards, right? Is, like, there are these things that I use to reward myself. It's not necessarily about the chase. It's not necessarily about the collection. It's about rewarding yourself. It's about, you know, getting yourself a little something-something. You know, it's about treating yourself. You know, because games... Games are great to buy, but I don't have enough time to play all of them. You know what I mean? Um, other things like Legos or whatever. I love Legos, but they take up way more space. You know, inevitably. Um, I just do not have the space for them. Um, and there's just like, you know, I could do things like that. Do nice things like that for myself. And there's just not a whole lot I can buy that doesn't take up space and still feel satisfying to me. You know what I mean? Um, Pokemon cards are still that great thing you know i mean so i don't know what i'm gonna do um please help send send help <laughs> um and uh let me know your what do you collect is it still good for you do you think it'll be good for you i don't want to feel wrong about having spent all the this money and time on pokemon cards but here we are <laughs> i don't know um have a great day i don't know how do i end these things i have no idea